Moon Screen Live, episode 301. Wow. Scotch and smoke rings. Come on in and see what I'm a smoking. Sometimes you just gotta put a little sass in your status updates. Another masterpiece, penned by none other than your very own. Oxhorn, welcome one and everyone to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings. I, as you know, am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn, here with my suspenders set to none other but maximum stun. Lots to go over today, lots to do, lots to see, lots to say. We've got a great show for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, the first episode of the 300s. Well, okay, so technically the second episode of the 300s, because there was, of course, episode 300. But this is the first episode after the first episode of the 300s, which makes this the second episode of the 300s. Special. Let's see, who do we have today? We've got Mr. Tumnus in the chat. Good evening, all he says. Hello, Mr. Tumnus. Trevor Green, Majin Justin, Madman Axe, Old for 17. Good to see you again, my friend. Been a while, huh? Cigar Ox, uh, uh, William Moore, Andy the DK, Bald Ox, Gentleman Badger, Holy Cow Kill 3, Fredoro, or Gregoro Fredoro Hartungo. <laughs> the fifth, though. Um, Gentleman Badger, a Forsaken Rules. Nathan Allen Bernard, my friend. Good to see you in the chat. For those who don't know, Nathan Allen Bernard is the musical genius behind the soundtracks to all my best movies. So everybody tip your classy cap in his direction, ladies and gentlemen. Water from a Guinness mug. Sad. That's okay, Nathan, because we have come fully equipped with some Valentine's scotch today. Um... Lots to do, lots to say, lots of fan art, lots of everything. All right, looks like I'm going to have to log into my Twitch account. So we had a really good episode last week. Um, last week was, of course, the 300th episode. And everyone that who came up and, and uh, celebrated with me, you guys were so kind and generous that uh, you made me walking away feeling really good. So I'm so so pleased and lucky to have fellows like you, ladies and gentlemen like you, who come faithfully every week to this program to watch us live. And uh, equally as, as thankful to all of those who watch the replays, on YouTube later on. Gregoro Fodoro says, Happy 301st. Truly a remarkable milestone, unlike last week. Indeed, my friend, indeed. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's, uh, let's get right to the cigars and the scotch. Look, I feel ashamed because I got all ready for the show today. I got my hat. I got my suspenders. I got my beard. I got my glasses, but you know what I forgot? My scotch glass. I forgot my scotch glass. And as you know, we can't be hobos here on Scotch and Smoke Rings and drink from the bottle. No! We are refined, gentle people. So we will use an old coffee cup from like Starbucks. This is how we're doing it today, ladies and gentlemen. Taking extreme measures. Pouring some Valentines in a coffee cup. Here we go. Mmm. Milky. It's, it's an experiment. This show is a giant social experiment, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. 
Not bad. Not bad, ladies and gentlemen. Pulling out of my beautiful humidor, courtesy of Cigar Ox, I'm gonna pull out one of my new faves. This is an uh, 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 a La Aurora uh, Cameroon torpedo shaped. All right, now I am I, I'm out of matches, aren't I? Matches. Oh, where for art thou matches? So I'll have to use this. It's fire. See how I did that? I um, lit it around the edge. That way, as I puff in, it's gonna pull the flame towards the center of the cigar, and then eventually, it'll burn evenly. Cigar Act says, I've got more cigars for you, but the, is the P.O. Box still the same? All right, a horrible story I have to share with you. I went down to the local post office, which is a different one from the one that I used to have at my old house. Um, and I, I was, I sought to open up a new P.O. box. So I'm standing in line and I'm there for like 30 minutes and they say, we are all out of P.O. boxes. Come back tomorrow and we'll have more. I'm like, okay. So I come back the next day. Sorry, we're still all out of P.O. boxes. Oh, man, excuse me. You'll have to come back the next day for more. And I said, forget this. And so I went to the next closest post office, the one that's like 10 minutes further away from my house. And I'm standing in line, this time for over an hour. And this was, to, for lack of a better word, a ghetto post office. Looks like they hadn't spent any government money on anything in a long time. And uh, so it, it was uh, pretty rough. And I get to the front and I say, I would like to open a P.O. box, please. And the lady was so kind of rude and curt. And she said, oh, we don't have those. They also were out of P.O. boxes. So three separate attempts, ladies and gentlemen, three different times I went to go open up a new P.O. box and they didn't have any available. So Cigar Ox, to answer your question, I think if you send it to my old one, that'll eventually get it, but no guarantees. So I currently don't have a place for you to send those cigars, which makes me very sad because I've got a great place to put them, as you just saw. Um, I'm gonna continue to work on it and try and find a solution. I know that there are private companies that give you mailboxes for rent, so I might have to start checking out some of those just to see. Nathan Alaponart says, sounds like Rockstar's customer support. Ha <laughs> ha, but um. <laughs> William Moore says, I would love to set alight a cigar in your honor, good sir, but sadly I've been sick these past few days and tobacco would not help the situation. My friend, I totally do not blame you. Yes, tobacco exacerbates sickness. <laughs> when I have head colds or when I've, I've got the flu or whatever, I do not smoke because that is not fun. So, uh, so heal up and get better. That's what you need to do. Trevor Green 98 shares with us something interesting and he says, Hey Oxhorn, I'm going to dedicate my life to figure out how to prevent fatal canine organ failures. 
You mean in dogs? You're going to dedicate your life to figuring out how to prevent dog organ fa failure? Well, good luck. That is a steep hill to climb because technically every death is due to organ failure, right? I mean, there may be other things, like maybe you've got pneumonia or maybe you've got Alzheimer's or something. But the prerequisite thing that happens before you die is that at least one of your organs fails. Maybe it's your heart. Or maybe it's your lungs. But those are both organs and they do fail. So if you can cure canine organ failure, you sure will have found immortality. And I urge you to figure that out because that's an important thing. Because my dog died from organ failure, says Trevor Green. Oh, well, I'm so sorry to hear about the fact that your dog died. But my case is still valid. All dogs die from organ failure. Even ones that are hit by buses, their, or their organs still fail. Like, right. I'm probably digging myself a hole. Anyway, uh, don't, need to, don't need to press on that anymore. But I'm sorry to hear about your loss, Trevor Green. And uh, if you want to continue your veterinary pursuits, I encourage you, because the world definitely needs it. Donald Mann says, Mr. Dennis, my good gentleman, have you ever tried dip chewing tobacco? I've never tried chewing tobacco, I have to admit. Um, doesn't really interest me. It sounds messy. And I'm, you know, I'm not one to shy away from that much of a mess because I like a, a greasy piece of bacon as much as the next guy. But, but chewing tobacco, I mean, then your spit gets all dark and then you kind of swallow a little accidentally and you constantly got to spit it out. It just doesn't appeal to me. That's just not my personal thing. But to each his own. t -Lad says, either this is on my screen and it's going wacko uh, or it's your camera, Oxrun, but you're very bright blue today. Am I? Let's see if I can change that. No? Does anyone else see me as being blue? Let's see, I've got auto gain on there. There we go. That was pushed all the way down. No wonder. Oh, that's much better. See, that's auto. That's a little bit redder. Let's do contents. Yeah, I don't know how these uh, these settings got got messed with, but I used to have this perfect. Okay, there you go, much better. Thank you for pointing that out, I'm glad somebody did. Trauma, good to see you in the chat today, my friend. Yeah, so I've been blue all day, I've had like 15, okay, not 15, I've had exactly, one, two, three, four, five, exactly five video conferences at work today and I've been blue this entire time. I don't look like a Smurf anymore, says t -Lad. <laughs> Good. Thank you, thank you. Black Shroma says, I've been here banning a few people already. Good. So glad you're here. It's a huge relief. Big weight off my shoulders. Andy the DK has some... Uh, 
insight into chewing tobacco. He says, don't. It's messy and it feels like your gums are being stung by frostbite. And I got really sick the both times I tried it. But I never get sick smoking cigars, lol. Yeah, I suppose it, it it's, diff it's different for every person. I have a friend who got sick smoking cigars. And I've gotten sick in the past too. Uh, but usually I'm okay. But I've never tried chewing tobacco. I, I, I won't. I probably won't. It just seems really messy to me. Baldock says, you talked until you were blue in the face, lol. Aha! Oh ho! <laughs> Woo! That's a dad joke right there. <laughs> HT Star says, Ox is feeling blue. Oh, another one. Okay, Donald Man says, what type of watch do you wear, Mr. Dennis? Looks very good. This is new. And I'm really proud of it. Not because it's a Rolex or a Seiko. Because it was $11. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I am proud of this watch because it was 11 flipping dollars. It's made in China. I've got, I went on to this watch forum because I, um, I got this watch just because I like the look of it and it's a crank watch, you know, you have to wind it up. Um, you have to wind up the crown every day or else it doesn't work, there's no batteries in it, which I love. And it's cut away on the dial so that you can see all the in internal mechanisms. And I'm on this watch forum and everybody is talking about, oh man, I spent $2,000 on this new watch. And they're showing off the photos of their watches and it's got like this brushed steel. And uh, some of them have moon cycles and all these weird things. This guy's like, yeah, I'm not, I that $10,000 Apple, gold Apple watch is nothing. Take a look at this $25,000 Rolex and blah, blah, blah. And then I hop in and I'm like, hey everybody, I just want to introduce you to my $11 Chinese made. It's Winner brand. That's right, the name of the brand is Winner, Charlie Sheen. Yeah, and you wind it up and everything, and no moon, no, and it doesn't have the date, it just tells you the time, because it's a watch, and I spend 11 bucks on it, so that I could spend 20 grand on something else, like a car, or a house payment, or something, <laughs> they banned me from the forum, <laughs> I shared pictures of it, I got out my phone, I'm like taking all these intricate angles, I'm like, yes, check out the gears moving, and the intricate pieces here, and look at the fake leather alligator band, and <laughs> <laughs> they banned me. <laughs> That's one thing you can't do. You can't hop onto a specialty niche forum and make fun of them without getting banned. <laughs> but hey, if you've got the money, right? If you've got the money and it's disposable income and you have a backup savings plan and you've invested in your Roth IRA and you've got a 401k and you've got health insurance and life insurance and you've got a paid for house and a paid for car and your kids are in college and you really have nothing left to spend your money on, then God bless it, man. If you want to spend $20,000 on a, on a gold-plated piece of brushed steel, then by all means, my friend, do your thing. Do your thing. I'm not hating. I'm not hating. I had fun. <sighs> Mr. Tumnus says, bad. Master Ox, bad. Raffle Mal, what would Mr. Hat think of you for being bad? Eh, I was I was channeling my, my inner Mr. Evil there is what I was doing. Goldbrot says, Ox, who is the mod for this chat? Um, cute little hardcore kitten and Iron Bark and me and a few others. I don't even know. It's been so long. It's been like years. I haven't put mods for that chat for years ago. <laughs> Nathan says, I'm wanting to link to something in the chat, but I don't know if I can. Well, it's fine with me. I don't think you'll get banned automatically or anything.
All right, time for fan art. Uh, lots of great fan art today. Let's see if I can share my screen. Okay, first up, we've got this from Andy the DK. He says, I went to a cigar event today at my local shop. It also happens to be my favorite cigar, La Aroma de Cuba, the fragrance of Cuba. Wow, look at that. Look at all those cigars in that shop of yours. Wow, that is a classy, classy establishment. Look at you smoking in the cigar shop. That is a luxury that I will never know because you're not allowed to smoke in any establishment here in Seattle. That's right, not even in cigar shops. It's quite a bummer. But thank you for sharing that, Andy the DK. Then there's this from Patrick, and she says, Is anyone else lately seeing the news that apparently beards contain poop? I mean, come on, Ox here has actually beard soap and stuff and such. A proper gentleman who takes care of their beard. To me, if you're going to grow a beard or mustache, you both do take care of it too. Sorry, it was bugging me for a bit. Uh, it reminds me the world isn't necessarily full of idiots. Yeah, and then Matt, Matt posted a fantastic follow-up, which is a, uh, an article here on Lifehacker, and it says, no, no, your beard is not full of poop. And they go through this entire, this entire thing talking about why your beard is not full of poop. And I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because that article was incredibly misleading. And I know this may not pertain to anybody, but this is interesting to me because I do own the world's premier uh, beard care blog and um, you know one of the things you get from people in the media especially like the 20 something uh, graduates from journalism school who have nothing better to write about and they're trying to write clickbait is this uh, this uh, this hatred towards beards because every single year around summertime you get the exact same crop of articles pop up have beards hit peak beard? Is there such a thing as peak peak beard? As our culture is our culture culture starting to wean itself away from peak beard, from loving beards? And of course, the answer to their question is always yes. But it comes up every single year. Are we at peak beard yet? Have we reached peak beards? Here's the 15 reasons why your beard is silly. There's even this video that I'm planning to respond to. This guy talking about how people who wear beards are are not as uh, attractive as they seem. And of course, that it tends to focus primarily on hipsters who have beards, as if no other person who has a beard is not a hipster, as if everyone who has a beard is a hipster. And um, it's, uh, anyway, so there's a lack of tolerance for the bearded folk out there in some members of the media. And this particular uh, essay, this particular quote unquote research paper that came out, I read it and it was, and it, it went viral, you know, it went everywhere. There, we found poop in beards, and what they did is they had this. Um, microbiologist go and swab the beards of like 15 random people that they found just to see what was in them. And you know, nine, nine times out of 10, they found um, microbes that were pretty normal, like the kind that you would find on your head or in your armpit or on any other part of your body, just regular skin. But they came back saying that they found some bacteria that typically can only be found in poop. And they showed the Petri dishes and they were all red and slimy and disgusting disgusting and nasty and the person interviewing holding the microphone is going oh oh poop and beards oh you know, it, was, it, it was one of those things where i'm sitting there going oh and it was so ridiculous because first of all those particular microbes only appeared in one person's beard the rest of them were completely fine and second of all as this article as this article points out the 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 uh, bacteria that that is in poop is in poop because it comes from skin as poop is exiting body. Okay, sorry that we're getting this this granular on scotch and smoke rooms. I, I apologize, but it's bacteria that lives on skin that enters poop as it's processing, and uh, to find that kind of bacteria on other parts of skin is not not that uncommon. So no, bearded people do not have poop in their beards contrary to this really misleading clickbait article. Anyway, thank you, Patrick, for sharing, and thank you, Matt, for uh, for sharing that as well. Uh, let's see. Then we have this question from Matt, and he says, Ox, I'm about to buy my first humidor, and I need your expert advice. What do you think about Humicare Black Ice versus Humicare 
Crystal gel, the blue stuff. Thank you for your help, good sir. Sincerely, Blagtuf. Uh, excellent question, and I'm and I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take uh, an opportunity to dive into this and sort of geek out a little bit. Nathan Allen Pinard raises another good point. He says, "Lol, the red stuff is what they grow the bacteria in. That's part of the culture. Yes, that's part of what they put on the bacteria to get it to grow. It's not what is on your beard." <laughs> T Lad says, drinking coffee here and had to stop. This conversation is getting a little interesting. Sorry. My apologies. <laughs> Especially since coffee is one of those things that makes you hyper. Um All right, we really went off on a tangent there. Alright, to answer your question, my friend, I actually just went through a lot of this, so if you're watching. And you're getting ready to set up your own humidor. I have a couple of things to share share with you. This is called the One Step Calibration Kit. Uh, it's it's a hydrometer calibration kit. You can get it for a couple dollars on Amazon, and it is prime. Cold Fire Gaming says, "Can you actually blow a smoke ring?" All right, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I have to stop the broadcast for a moment because I'm showing this fellow that yes, I can actually blow a smoke ring. Let's do this. Okay, they're not really good today. Hold on. Ah, my mustache is getting in the way. Ah! Oh, bollocks and... Daggone it. All right, I'm giving up for right now. On a good day, yes, I can blow a smoke ring, Cold Fire Gaming. But I need to trim my mustache. Maybe I should just singe it. I don't have any wax around here, do I? I'm getting some tiny rings there. Anyway. So, um, Black Tuff, uh, the reason this is important is because what you, what you need to get is you need to get a hydrometer. As you see in here, I've got three different hydrometers. <laughs> Imagine, Jack, uh, Imagine Justin says, uh, Oxfam got a little angry there. No, 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 that wasn't anger, my friend. That was deep frustration from the heart. This is an analog hydrometer, and then these are two digital hydrometers. And what you're doing is you're calibrating them. There's a trick that, that says whenever you add water to salt and put it in, in, an, in a closed environment, that the humidity within that environment will always be 75 degrees. So if you can take your hydrometer and put it into an environment like that, you always know that it's 75 degrees or 75% 70, humidity inside the bag so you can calibrate it appropriately. If it doesn't read 75%, just crank the dials until it does because you know that this is 75% humidity. Then you can take your, hum your, your digital hydrometer out and put it in your humidor. And that will accurately tell you whether or not your cigars are at the right humidity. Now, um, this is the one that I like the best. This is my HumiCare humidifier, or it's not really a humidifier, but anyway, it, it soaks up water and releases it into the, into the humidor so that your cigars can soak it up. And uh, I also have this one, which I got at a local cigar shop, and this has the crystals in it. I don't know if you can see. It has crystals in it very similar to the black ice crystal one that you're talking about. This, I greatly prefer. I think it looks better. I think it soaks up and retains moisture better. But they're both completely functional. So you get the one that you like best, whether you choose to go with the crystals or you choose to go with the blue one. Um, uh, whatever you like best, they both work completely fine. Let's see if I can do it again. Yeah. 
Ah, my fan is just going too too wide here. There was one. I feel redeemed. I feel vindicated. I got one decent smoke ring. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, any other fan art? I think that's it. Lots of great fan art from last week, which I won't show again because we showed it last week. But next up, wow, this lady is just opera in my ear. Okay. Thank you. 1937 <clears throat> you're done uh we've got some audio messages from the fans here let me refresh to make sure that i've got them all oh and there's one more mr tumnus says lady tumnus is learning a lot by you Ma master ox well good I, I do hope that i can add education to the masses Cheers, let's drink some scotchy coffee. All right, first on the program is Holy Cow Kill 3. You're on Scotch and Smoke Rings, my friend. What's on your mind? Hello, Oxhorn. My name is Holy Cow Kill 3. And first off, I would like to congratulate you on getting past 300 episodes. That is a huge milestone for Thank anyone you. doing podcasts or videos such as yourself. And I have a question. You've played video games in the past like you've told us before, right? Right. What was the first game you've ever played? And with that, I will say good night and stay classy, my friend. The first game I ever played that really got me into gaming was probably a game you've never heard of. Well, okay, PC game. Of course, we played console games, and I loved Sonic, and I loved Mario, and we played all of the classics. But the first PC game I ever played was called Dawn of Exploration, or Age of Exploration, or something. But basically, the, the, the point of the game it was one of those games where you're... Oh, Conquering the New World, I think it was. You, you could choose between Portugal, Spain, England, Denmark, and a few other countries. And then you sent your ships to the New World, and you had to race against all of the other nations to discover more of the New World. And it was really fun. I always cho chose Spain for some reason. I just like the yellow color. And um, as you discovered a mountaintop, you could name the mountain. And as you discovered a forest, you could name the forest. And you had to mine for resources and get ore and, and um, wood and you had to build fortresses and you had to build armies. It was one of the m more fun games that I ever played. It really got me into real-time strategy games in particular. So that would be my answer to that. J Reds the Mighty says, "Do you ever think that you'll you'll find yourself in a situation where you have to shave your head or your beard? Probably not. I mean, I don't have to because of work. I don't have to because of the ladies. I don't have to because of family. I've got no reason to shave this beard. I guess if I were to get sick and my beard was to fall out, maybe. But that's the only thing I can think of." H.T. Stardax asks, uh, Ox, do you ever go into the building you said you could smoke in with other cigar-liking people? Yes, so there, there was many years ago, I used to go to this Smoke Easy, where um, because they didn't actually have any employees or sell anything, you could smoke in the building because the laws in Seattle were weird that way. And uh, I would talk with other st people in startups. Uh, which is the business I'm in. 
and um, we could smoke cigars, and it was a lot of fun. We would sit around in big pieces of leather furniture. Winston Churchill was on one wall. C.S. Lewis was on another wall, and there was a scotch bar there with no employees, so you had to mix your own drinks, but it was a lot of fun. It was just a private club, and I haven't been there in many years, so I should check it out again sometime. All right, next up, the one and only Madman Max is on the program. Madman Max, what is on your mind? Greetings, Oxhorn. It is your friendly Madman Max here. Today, we are doing a uh, mythological question. Oh. In the English Isles, there is something called a red cap. Do you know what a red cap is? If so, you have three answers. A dwarf, a pixie, or an elf. And I also want the reason for its hat being red. So there's also three answers for this one. It's a murderous, it's it likes jam, or it bathes its hat in some form of red berry. Pick one of these three answers. I shall be in stre uh, the stream tonight, so have a good evening and enjoy your scotch. Okay, well, my original guess was that it's a mushroom, but that wasn't any of the options. So I'm going to say that it's red because it bathes its hat in red berries. And I'm going to guess... Pixie? That's my guess. You'll have to let me know. I don't know the answer to that one. Jonath is on the program. Jonath, what is on your mind, good sir? Greetings, Oxhorn. This is Jonath. I hope you are in good spirits this evening, Classy Sir. Before I bring forth my questions for today's episode, I would like to again thank you for inviting me to the show via Skype for the Friends and Fans edition. Now, to my questions. First, with 300 episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings behind you, one might say that you are a streaming guru, despite technical sabotage by elves. My question is, would you be up to create a streaming how-to post to give those in your audience a starting point for their own video blogs? Possibly including what kind of equipment and software you suggest, as well as plans, ways to plan their shows, and other tips. Next, you stated in last week's episode that you enjoyed having the fans on for interviews and that you wish that you had started it earlier. Do you foresee inviting fans to the show as special guests? <laughs> and lastly, today is the National Day of Prayer in the U.S. What is your view on prayer, and do you believe it works? And if so, have you seen it work in your life? Wow. Thanks again for your time to answer all our questions, good sir, and stay classy. Okay, there's a lot in that. I'm going to un unbundle it here. Um... Okay, I got completely thrown off by the by the day of prayer one. That's what all I'm thinking about. Three what did you say? Socks horn. Technical sabotage by elves. Oh, okay. So, um, yes, to answer your question, I have thought about creating a guide to streaming your own broadcast. I can briefly tell you now all of the equipment that I use. I use a software called XSplit, the letter X and the word split, and that hooks up with Twitch. So whenever I want, I can just fire up XSplit on my computer. It pulls in my webcam stream and my microphone, compiles them together, allows me to show off different portions of my website or of my desktop and also the game I'm playing. And then it pushes all of that as one uh, solid piece of film to Twitch where you see it. From Twitch, I can then export it to YouTube or upload the file to YouTube directly. As for microphones, I use the blue, the blue Yeti. Um, I used to use a blue snowball, but now I've upgraded to the blue Yeti, and I love it. Uh, and then for a camera, I've got the best rated number one camera on Amazon, whatever that's called. It's the Logitech HD something or other. I can't even read it, but it's pretty wide. Um, I forget the name of it, but that's the camera I use, and it's got a pretty good video quality, as you can see. And really, that's all there is to it. I should create a post like that, and I will think about it. Um, I'll get to the answer of your prayer question in just a sec. Madman Max has given us the answer to his question, which was... <clears throat> Here's a little bit of mythological history, ladies and gentlemen. A red cap, or red cap, also known as Pauri or Dunter. Dunter? 
is a type of malevolent, murderous dwarf goblin or fairy found in border folklore. They are said to inhabit ruined castles found along the borders between England and Scotland. Redcaps are said to murder travelers who stray into their homes and dye their hats with their victims' blood, from which they get their name. Redcaps must kill regularly, for if the blood staining their hats dries out, they die. I never knew that. Nicely done. Okay, to answer your question on prayer, uh, I, I f forgot. I didn't realize that today was the day, day of prayer. Uh, as for prayer working, my I, my thoughts on that are complex. So, religion is a metaphysical belief. Metaphysical beliefs don't need evidence, which is why it's completely different from science. This is why when people say, well, where's the evidence for God? It's an irrelevant question because you don't need evidence for God because a belief in God is a metaphysical belief, not one based in the tangible world or based upon evidence. It's a faith. That's why the Bible says um, it is greater that you have faith than to believe via proof. Um, so with all of that said, uh, we, we come back to prayer, which is that prayer... In, is not just a Christian concept. Prayer is found in many different religions, and sometimes it's a way of communicating with the earth or communicating with your ancestors or whatever, but I'll focus just on the Christian version of prayer, which is that prayer is a way to communicate with God. Well, Catholics believe that you can, you can pray to saints and then saints can intercede with God on your behalf, which I don't necessarily think is necessary because you can go directly to God. The Bible says walk boldly into the throne room. Anyway, so if you're talking to God with prayer, you're having faith that he hears you simply because the Bible says. You don't need evidence that he hears you because it's a metaphysical belief. You have faith that he hears you because the Bible says he hears you. Um, that said, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what the purpose of prayer is. People think that prayer should be used by Christians to get what you want. And that's not how it works. And this leads to a lot of people becoming depressed and losing faith because they'll pray for something and then they don't get it and they lose faith. Or even worse, they pray for a loved one to not die or to be healed and then that loved one dies and then they lose faith. And that's not why, the way it's supposed to work and it's definitely not, not the way that the Bible has explained it to work. Instead, prayer is a, f a form of praise. It's a form of a testament of faith. You're testifying the fact that you have faith by praying and having belief that God will hear you. And it's not a way to demand from God to do something for you. That's actually a pagan belief. Um, instead, it's a, it's a way of interceding with God to glorify him and to say that his will be done. So the way a proper prayer should, be, should go is to say, all right, God, this is where my heart is at right now. This is what I'm feeling right now. This, this is where I'm weak. This is where I think I need improvement. Um, thank you for everything you've done in my life. You know, talk about what you're doing. It's basically just having a conversation with God, just opening up your heart with you. And then you do that having faith that God will do what is best according to God, not that God will do what you want him to do or what you think is best. Because the Bible says repeatedly, God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God knows what is better for not only we as individuals, but humanity as a whole far better than we ever will. So it's kind of like a toddler saying, you know, mommy, I really want this, this new puzzle book. Please give me this puzzle book. And the mom could say no for a variety of reasons. She could say no because there isn't enough money in the bank. She could say no because that puzzle book is crass and she doesn't want you to play with that puzzle book. She could say no because it's cheap and she'd rather get you one of better quality. There are any number of reasons why she could say no. But if she does say no, it's not because she didn't hear you. If she, if she does say no, it's not because you've sinned or because you're bad. If she says no, it's because of some reason that you probably can't comprehend because you're two, right? And it's similar to us. We're the two-year-olds and God is the adult. We might have all of these needs and wants and wishes and desires and we constantly explain them to, to God in, in, in our daily prayers, and some of them get answered and some of them don't. And that doesn't mean that God isn't there if what you want isn't fulfilled, or God hasn't heard you if what you want didn't happen. It simply means that 
God is the deity. God is the omnipotent, omnipresent God, and he's going to decide what's going to happen, not necessarily us. Um, then you ask whether, if ever there was a moment in my life when I saw a prayer, quote-unquote, work. And that's difficult because when I pray, I don't pray for things. I don't say, God, I need a new car or God, I've got this need. When I pray, it's usually a thank you prayer or um, I'm just talking with God about my day or something like that. So it's hard for me to answer that. So I'll go back in time to when I was a child. And this is going to seem silly to many people, especially those who are not Christians, and I understand that going into it. But when I was a child, <laughs> I have a very vivid memory of my mom cleaning vegetables in the kitchen sink. And she was washing the vegetables and, you know, peeling some of the carrots and the potatoes or whatever, and the sink got clogged. And I come up as my six-year-old boy self or whatever. I'm like, oh no, the sink is clogged. And my mom at the time was trying to teach me about God and to teach me about prayer. And she said, um, all right, well, what, well, the sink is clogged, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pray for it. And I remember that this sink was really clogged. Like it would take a lot to get it unclogged. And so we both closed our eyes and she prayed over, she prayed over it. And then immediately it unclogged. And as a six-year-old, I was like, whoa, right? I'm like, whoa, the power of prayer. Oh, that's amazing. And you know, it's just a sink. Why would God answer a prayer to unclog a sink, but not to answer a prayer to feed starving children or something like that? Those are the kind of things that I think of frequently when I remember that point in time. Maybe it was serendipity. Maybe it just happened to be unclogged and God didn't really answer the prayer. It just happened to unclog on its own. Completely possible. But I think that that moment, God was using that moment not to unclog the sink because the sink needed to be unclogged, but to use that as a moment in my life that I would remember for the rest of my life as a way to bolster my faith. That's why I think he did it. He did that at that moment. So that's really the only example that I have. There was no garbage disposal. Remember, this was the 90s, Andy the DK, and this was uh, in an old, outdated apartment complex. So she didn't have a garbage disposal, um, <clears throat> nor a dishwasher. <laughs> anyway, um, so Andy the DK is next on the line. Andy the DK, what is on your mind, my friend? And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Stormwind City, it's Quickfire Questions! And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host with the most, here's Andy the DK! Greetings everyone, Andy the DK here, and welcome to everyone's favorite Scotch and Smoke Rings Thursday night segment, Quickfire Questions! As always, I am your host, Andy the DK, and as always, here is our fine bearded beardsman, Oxhorn! Oxhorn, how are you doing this week, sir? Hope everything is well, hope you're doing great, hope you're ready to answer some Quickfire Questions, because here we go! Ox, the topic this week is going to be all about episode 300. Let's see how well you were paying attention during your 300th episode. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Question number one. All right. How long did it take you to smoke that monster of a cigar? Question number two. About two hours. What Hearthstone deck did you play the most during episode 300? And question Whoa. number three. In order, who were your Skype guests in ah. numerical order? Thank you, Ox, and thank you everyone for playing. Be sure to tune in next week. And Andy the DK here signing out, reminding you all to get your gnomes spayed or neutered. Andy the DK signing out. Take care, everyone. In order, it was James, John, Jonathan, Mad Mad Max, Matt, Andrew, Eric, and that's it. I know that because that's the order they are in my Skype program. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's the order that they are in. All right, 
next up, this one is from Imagine Justin, and please correct me if I was wrong, Andy the DK. Imagine Justin's on the program. What is on your mind, good sir? Hello, I'm Sean Majin Justin here. Hope you're having a great Thursday night. I have a quick question for you. Bane Bloodhoof, Garrosh, Thrall, King Varian, Jane of Proudmoore, and Muradin Bronzebeard, I believe, is his name. Which one of those leaders is one of your top favorites? I really liked Cairn Bloodhoof. Was he one of the options? I don't know if he was or not. Not because of some sort of lore thing, but just because as a, a young player of World of Warcraft, and I would go into Thunder Bluff, and I would see Cairn Blood, Bloodhoof, and he stood atop the giant hillside city on top of that huge totem pole, and he stood there protecting the entire city with his giant log in his hand. And man, I liked that guy. I'm like, oh man, I hope I can wield a giant log someday. I don't know, I just have a, a nostalgic fondness for Karen Bloodhoof. That's what I would say. Oh, man, why is this going out? Okay, um, thank you everybody for your, your, your kind and surprisingly thought-provoking questions this week. Um, uh, I am going to fire up some Hearthstone because I just put together a deck that I believe Andy the DK sent me. It's called The Gentleman. It's called Classy Control Warrior Deck for Oxhorn. And I just put it together and I haven't played it yet, so we're going to try it out and see if it does any good. Imagine Justin asks a question and he says, Won't that lighter ruin the taste of the cigar? You know, yes, that's what cigar aficionados will tell you. But I've never noticed it. When I've used lighters in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past, like my Bic lighters, I, um, I've never noticed a chemical taste or a fuel taste or an oily taste or anything like that. They tell you that you will have a taste like that, but I, I've never tasted it, so. So I guess it's it's really up to really up to all of you. If, if you've tried it in the past and you have tasted something that you didn't like, then I, I would definitely use a cedar match or a cedar spill to light your cigar because that that, that way you have a pure unadulterated cigar taste. But I've never noticed a difference, probably because my palate is so muted um, that I just use a lighter. Trevor Green asks, did uh, did Krendor ever reach out to you for his show, Fishing with Krendor? No, not yet. I haven't heard from him. But I look forward to it. Okay, Gentleman Badger says, that was of my creation, good sir. Sorry for the confusion, Gentleman Badger. Thank you for providing me with this deck. I am using a deck that Gentleman Badger made for me, so if I lose... It's your fault. Badger, let's do this. Sorry, I didn't share my screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Uh, uh, hold on a minute. Yes, you can watch me play. Um, uh, my, my bad, ladies and gentlemen. This is the first time that's happened. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yes, I am playing Hearthstone. Here we go. You do get to watch me play. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry about that. Where am I? What's going on here? I don't even know what's going on. Um, Badger, what are you doing here? You gave me a bunch of cards that I don't typically use, so I'm kind of trying to figure out how this works. Well played. Whenever this minion takes damage, summon a 1-1 imp. Okay. Smoke rings. All right, I'm getting requests for smoke rings. I'll do my best. There. I got one at least.
By the way, there are a few cards in my deck that you didn't give me just because there were a few cards in the deck you gave me that I didn't have. So I had to improvise a little bit. <laughs> Shiyut asks, hey Oxhorn, do you still play Heroes of the Storm, or can your connection not handle it? My connection handles it fine. I just haven't played in a long time. I should fire it up though, because I know it's changed a lot since the last time I played. Last time I played it was in beta. Is it still in beta? Trevor Green asks, Hex, have you ever had anything paranormal happen to you? Because when I was little, I lived in a small apartment in New Hampshire, and two people died there, one from both from mothball poisoning and one from a major heart attack. And when I lived there, chairs moved on their own, closets opened, and something traumatized me to this day. I was grabbed in my bed by my shoulder, and I ran out of the room screaming, and I jumped through one of my parents' little windows to the door, and I hid. Great question. Uh, so I'll start by saying that I don't believe in the paranormal. I don't believe in UFOs. So I don't have any any reason to believe that anything that's ever happened to me is because of some sort of paranormal activity like ghosts or whatever. That said, there have been a few instances in my life where I've experienced things that I can't explain to this day. And... What? Whoa, wait a minute. What just happened? I thought... I thought you were supposed to become Jaraxxus. Battlecry, destroy your hero and replace it with Lord Jaraxxus. What happened? Why didn't that not happen? Okay. Um... Oh, come on! Why did that not... Why did, Why is that not you? Why did that happen? I don't get that. Is that a glitch? That's weird. Uh, okay, so, you know, the, the normal things have happened in my life, like weird knocks on the door and uh, bangings on things, and there was one moment in my life when I felt 
myself grabbed in my sleep, but that could just be my mind playing tricks on me. What was that? Deal two damage to a character. If that kills it, summon a random demon, and the random demon you got was Illidan Storm Storm Rage. <laughs> I'm just not lucky. I'm not lucky. The random demon you got was Illidan Storm Rage. Jeez. Greg says, it's because you killed the Void Color minion. Upon doing so, it summoned a minion, but it doesn't activate the battle cry. Oh! Wait, what? Malganis? I'm about ready to pull a heart on here, ladies and gentlemen. Are you invincible? He is invincible. <laughs> oh, he got the demon, of course. While he's invincible. While he's invincible. I don't like this deck. I'm not fond of this deck, my friend. I'll play it once more, and if I lose, we're going back to my decks. Just saying. All these low level minions. <laughs> Gentleman Badger says, it's a good deck. I just got lucky. Yeah, yeah. Says the guy who made the deck for me that I'm playing against him. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. I know, it's a good deck. Good deck. Greg Hartang says, practice makes perfect ox. Hey. All right. Fair point. Baldock says, be humble now, Oxhorn. That's right. I need to be humble. If I'm not humble, I'm going to lose. Pride cometh before a fall. All right. Humbility. Humbility. I shall be the most humble person playing Hearthstone today. I shall win with my humbleness.
Ah, rough stuff. Oh, for 17 says, or you could trust in the heart of the cards. Is that a thing? Or am I just trying to trust this deck to save me? Oh! Fell sauce. would have killed the war bond, my friend. Yu-Gi-Oh! reference. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Oh my gosh. I thought I had a different card. Why did I do that? Uh. a good song. Well, at least I know you're out of sheep.
Nice job, Shwama. Okay, if I can pull this off, then there's something wrong with me. Alright, maybe there's something wrong with me. First time that works, and I don't even need it. Huzzah! All right, at least one more. But I'm doing my shaman. Good job, Majin Justin. Fine battle. Well done, my friend. <laughs> Baldock says, "Place your bets now to see if Hartung will be if a Hartung will be pulled off."
Okay, everyone's asking for a book plug. Where's my book? All right, I can do a book plug. Wait, what's that? I didn't do that. Did someone ask to see The Tale of Chloron Hastings? Available in print still for the low, low price of money. The Tale of Gloran Hastings, a swashbuckling fantasy adventure novel penned by these ten fingers, available for the low, low price of uh, some sort of cash value, uh, at your local bookstore, that is, of course, if your local bookstore is Amazon, also available in ebook form. Jonas says, is he sniffing his book? Yes. Oh, pages. Ink spelled by me. Oh, it's so good. Thank you, Shoot. Okay, Greg, the only way you would have known that I could have killed you next turn is if you were looking at my hand. Greg! 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 Mr. Hartung! Hmm. Well, I guess you could have just done the odds and said, well, can he do three damage next turn? Hmm. I suppose there's always that. <laughs> Shwarma says, yes, I am Oxhorn's Ed McMahon. <laughs> Fruit Shop says, no, his Andy Richter. <laughs> uh, but you gotta love Andy Richter, right? He's still there 15 years later doing his thing. She says, Ox, don't be a sore winner. Yeah, you're right. My apologies. I would never, I would never accuse Greg of looking at my cards. I know Greg. He would never do such a thing. Even though he did pull a hard tongue. Again. I know. It's just, it just stands to reason, right? Obviously. I know, Greg. You did have a bad hand. Bad hand. No, I know, Greg. He doesn't look at cards. Report 
Thank you, Barler. Thank you. Fred Shop says, do you dress that way all the time or just for the stream? Well, to get ready for this show, I put the hat on. DK, good to meet you on the field of battle. Whenever you summon a minion with death rattle, gain one attack. Cigarrock says, except when changing diapers, then he puts on a wetsuit. Indeed. Mr. Tumnus says, lol, Lady Tumnus just asked me if I would ever try suspenders. I can't. I'm only 125 pounds, and I fear suspenders would break me. Oh, ho, 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 my friend. No, 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 no. Suspenders would not break you. Man, what's with all these breaks? Imagine Justin asks, Oxhorn, speaking of the beginning of your show when it was blue, would you ever consider having a classy moment with the screen black and white and then resuming the show back in its normal color? It's a clever idea. You've got some natural showmanship in you, my friend. Ah! All my minions are dead! Shiud asks, do you ever wish that you could go back to the grassy mesa and meet the wandering Kodo and walking among the gentle giants of Mulgore? I have many such fond memories of the game. Yes, I wish I could go back sometimes. Oh my gosh. Oh, my God. 
That was a rough one. Greg Hartung asks, do you use the free edition of XSplit or uh, do you have the subscription for added features? Oh, I just use the free version. I haven't had to pay a dime to do this stream except for buy my camera and my microphone. Imagine Justin says, what type of exploit do you use, Oxworn? Broadcasting or gaming? I use the gaming version. Fruit Shop says, I don't see a list of favorite scotches on the website or blog. Uh, that's a great idea. I should probably do that. Um, my favorite scotches are Lafroig, Glenfiddich, and Lagavalin for premium scotches. For really cheap scotches, I like Scoresby and Valentine's. My heart here. Ah, oh, man. Rough stuff. Well played, my friend. Well met. Nicely done, Andy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's going to be it for today. So let's do Smoke Ships. As we do at the end of every episode here on Scotch and Smoke Rings, my friend, we blow a smoke ship into, an, into existence based upon your recommendations. So for the Twi Twitch crowd who keep on wondering whether or not I can blow smoke rings, just wait. You're going to see a beautiful smoke sculpture. What would you like to see, ladies and gentlemen? What is on your mind? William Moore says, Oxhorn, Staghorn, and Mortuse piloting a flying saucer made out of pecan pie while fighting a bathroom, a, a battalion, while fighting a battalion of butterfly riding hippies. 
Oxhorn and Mortus fly through the skies, battling the hippies with bacon bazookas. But sadly, Staghorn is too busy eating the flying saucer to help with the fight. The hippies fire back with tofu bombs and hummus missiles. Oxhorn and the hippies fight for many hours, but the power of bacon is just too much for the hippies, and they are finally defeated. Aircraft into bacon-crusted pie. Delicious. The gentleman Badger says, I hope you found the deck satisfying to play. <laughs> well, the second game, yes. The second game I did find it satisfying to play. T-Lad asks, Ox, is the weather down there finally sunny and beautiful and no snow? Well, I'm actually broadcasting from Seattle. And so we didn't get much snow at all. In fact, we didn't get any snow. Um, but yes, it is sunny and beautiful. And William Moore is finishing his smoke ship, which was not done. To continue, it says, aircraft into bacon-crusted pecan pie. They are finally defeated, and then they land the craft and celebrate by turning their bazookas into aircraft. They land the craft and celebrate by turning their bazookas and aircraft into bacon-crusted pecan pie. Gotcha. Understood. Sheud says, Oxhorn stealing all of Greg Hartung's gold while riding on a giant battleship against Magin, uh, Magin Justin's dragons, destroying them with bacon cannons, Crashing them into Darnassus, turning the tree into a bacon tree. Ooh. The bacon tree of Darnassus? I'd go there. Shawarma says, a thick and chewy pizza topped with extra cheese and pepperoni and sausage and bacon bits and a side of thick, cheesy bread and a pitcher of new Belgian fat tire ale. My soul weeps of envy. <laughs> Again, good sir, you put me to tears with food. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, lots of great smoke chips today. I'm going to have to go with William Moore's. It's got everything. It's got the hummus hippies and all sorts of bacon pecan stuff. All right, here we go. Pay close attention, there's only a stub of this cigar left, but hopefully, hopefully, it'll be enough to blow an epic smoke ship. moments before your very eyes we saw Oxhorn, Staghorn, and Mortus piloting a flying saucer made out of pecan pie while fighting a battalion of butterfly-riding hippies. Oxhorn and Mortus flew through the sky, battling the hippies with bacon bazookas, but sadly Staghorn was too busy eating the flying saucer to help with the fight. The hippies fire back with tofu bombs and hummus missiles. Oxhorn and the hippies fought for many hours, but the power of bacon was just too much for the hippies, and they are finally defeated. They then land the craft and celebrate by turning their bazookas and aircraft into bacon-crusted pecan pie. Oh. oh my goodness, I end this episode hungry, thanks to all of you, especially you shawarma. Oh, oh man, they need to fill this vacant cavity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for coming to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings. Let's finish off our Scotch bottoms up. One more smoke ring. Or a smoke puff, if you're me. Anyway, thanks for coming to this week's episode, uh, episode 301. Next week is episode 302. Be sure to tune in, same Ox time, same Scotch channel, to next week's episode of The Fine Program. Thanks again for coming, and we will see you next week. Until then, my friends, be sure every one of you to stay 